Okay. <clears throat> From Darling Stadium in Hampton, WHCS Cable Channel 46 presents Peninsula District Boys Soccer, the Phoebus Phantoms and the Bethel Bruins. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Tim Cole along with Bob Hintz. We welcome you to Darling Stadium for this contest between the Bethel Boys team, which has an overall record of 5-5. Five and five. In the district, they're 3-2. and two. And the Phoebus team. And their record is, let me make sure, I had, thought I had it here a minute ago, Bob. Help well, me in out. the district, they're 2-2-1, two, two and one, Tim. That's what I thought. 2-2-1, two, two and one, they got five points. And the winner of this team, or this game, will end up on in fourth place. And, of course, the Bruins want to beat the Phantoms because they're the defending champion, or district champions from last year, if you remember. Oh, a goal right off. Hopefully we have it because I was looking down Number at my three. roster. For the Phantoms, that is Chris Finch. That's right, Chris Finch. He's a senior, Tim, got a 3.9 GPA. Catch your breath, Bob. Oh, look at that beautiful assist. I didn't get the player that, uh, that centered that ball, but great job. And I'm out of breath running up those steps. So just underway, I would have to think we were within the first minute of the uh, contest. The Phantoms score quickly and lead one to nothing. Well, you've got some good information that we got from uh, Kevin Murphy, the uh, coach over at uh, Bethel. And, of course, we want to thank him and, and uh, Pete Powell, the coach of the uh, Phantoms. Get a chance. Uh, if we do get a chance, we'll put the uh, starters Take a deep uh, breath, on the bud. on the uh, on the screen. Uh, I gave just got done giving them to Andy, so he's got to get a chance to get them on. So maybe later on we'll give the uh, starters. The ink is still drying. <laughs> yeah, just just take your, take a couple deep breaths there. You know, you get to be your age, Bob. You can't hey, run up hey, and down hey. the stairs. <laughs> Phantoms on the attack again. The ball is precariously laying there, and, uh, and at the last second, the Bruin keeper is able to pick the ball up. Who do we have playing goal for the Bruins, Bob? Do we have the starting yeah, line? Yeah, I, I do have the, uh, let me find it here. The, uh, well, let's see, where's the keeper? Uh, well, we've got Mike Sanborn listed as for the, the Bruins. Keeper. Okay, here we go, here and we go. Paul Zayas. Goalkeeper, I think, is Mike Sambo in number 10. I'm not mistaken for the Bruins. Well, see, uh, number 11 is not starting for the Bruins today. They're going to have a, uh, a penalty called. Uh, if I saw what I saw, yeah, they're going to have a penalty kick of the, the goalie, goalkeeper, whoever this gentleman is, on the inbounds throw, pushed a phantom player from behind, preventing him from playing the ball. So now we've got a direct kick penalty. Well, that's Mike Sanborn for the Bruins. And it's a goal. <clears throat> so the Phantoms take the lead two to nothing. And uh, on the play, intentional or not, a uh, goal was scored on the, on the penalty kick. Watch this, the penalty kick. Mm. And that looks like that was number nine. It for is number nine, Shami Brown. Oh, I got a pronunci pronunciation for your uh, the the uh, referee Fon Yammer. Well, he's not even in this game. Well, he's sitting over there on the bench, but a Yammer. He's not. They changed jerseys. Tim said they didn't leave, did they? We got three of them: Yammer, yep. Charlie Brewster, and Skip Harris. Those are your officials. Referees. So the same same. 
Same referee as we had for yeah. the girls game. Yeah. Uh, trying to trick us. I thought you were kidding. No. <laughs> Do I look like I'm kidding? <laughs> well, of course not. This is Finch. He had the first goal. He's double teamed, and they take it away from him. Phantoms have come out with fire. They lead two to nothing. Well, and, and Pete said that uh, Powell, when I talked to him over there, he says the Bruins want to beat us for two reasons. Number one, they want to hang on to that number four place. If we beat them, we will tie for fourth. And he says number two is that we're the defending champion, and you always like to beat the defending champion. I said, you got a point there. So Kikitan didn't win the championship last year. No. we did. Remember, we did a game here, and uh, the Phantoms won. Okay, there is the Phoebus lineup. We got Zamora, Brown, Leto, French, Vogel, Gallat, Moore, Stowers, Cleveland, Demir, and Pavlik is in the uh, goalie box. Paul Pavlik, named yeah. from the past. Kicks that uh, football rather good, too, yes, if you remember. All right, look at Bethel's lineup now. We have Bell. I can't see it from here very well. That's the end dip. End up, Tyfer, go ahead. Green, Andrews, Martin, Brooks, Poole, Smith. I guess there's Joey Wright without a T on it. And Mike Sanborn. <laughs> it's all right, Andrew. But I tell you, he did great to get them up there that quick. He uh, did. Super. And, and you see the, the, the colors? Uh -huh. I tell you, that guy is just super. Yes, he is. Superimposed is what he is. <laughs> Talking about Andy Foley. Andrew. Andrew Foley. He Andrew. wanted to know our first names in full. And I'm going to, going to put our names up there a little differently than he did before. Bob. Yeah, he was. Uh, <coughs> I checked that out. Of course, we got Don Trouse as engineer, Nathaniel Braxton and Ronnie S. Ben Baton as the cameras, Bev Penn in the uh, truck doing an instant replay, and then we have Scotty Bowers. Does everything else. And we won't hold that against him. Do want to mention that we will pick a player of the game for both of these teams this evening. The, the player will receive a plaque and a shirt. The plaque comes from Engraving Inc. located at Tab Square on Route 17. For all your engraving needs, contact Jim at 596-8850, Dave Buckwald is the owner. The shirt comes with Island of Hardware and Sporting Goods. They're located in Pocosin, and they can meet all your sports needs with a full line of athletic goods, both team and individual equipment, uniforms, plus screen printing. Call Dave Chubb at 868-8467. John Roberts is the owner. And, of course, we also want to <coughs> acknowledge our corporate sponsor. Yeah, Zooms and David Allen, and we do want to thank them. They will help us. I uh, recognize a senior off of uh, the spring sports that we're televising this year, the soccer, girls and boys, uh, softball, baseball. The senior on each one of the teams who have demonstrated academic excellence. These players will receive plaques at a school board meeting after the season. We want to thank David Allen and Zooms for the continuing support to WHCS and, of course, our recognition of our student athletes. Close play there as Pavlik, the keeper, had some contact with the Bruin player, and the uh, official ruled that uh, it was not uh, legal contact, so they allowed for a free kick from the goalie. Now contact again. Is it me, or are we having more penalties <coughs> in this game than we did in the ladies' game? Yeah. Well, a little more physicalness uh, involved here, and the players uh, making a little more contact, and the officials, of course, in soccer, it's a non-contact sport, which is a lot like saying basketball is a non-contact sport. If you've ever played either of these sports, it certainly is a contact Whoa. sport. There you see more of it. Uh, so it will be physical, and the officials will keep a close rein on it. You can um, tackle in soccer, but you can't take your man down, uh, not in the sense of tackling like you would in, uh, in football. Of course, in Europe, soccer is called football. So if we've thoroughly confused, we'll continue from here. Phantoms putting the pressure on. Now the Bruins get it out. Racing down the sideline, Joe Teffer centers it nicely. Oh, nice behind-the-back dribble that time. Edmund Endup. 
Whoa. <laughs> there's, see, there's the contact. <laughs> that's the kind of contact you're not allowed. Now, inadvertent, you know, two players going for the ball, that's, that's one thing. That's okay, but well, that, that, that was, I'm going yeah. to get the ball, you better get out of my way. Boom. Exactly. And that uh, allows for a free kick here. Taken by number 19, Matt Andrews. Header. Away from the goal. And it will go out of bounds across the touchline. And Phoebus will play it. Phoebus in the blue. They are the visitors this afternoon. Thank you, Bruins, for wearing the gold jerseys with the dark numbers. It's much easier to see. Some excellent uh, dribbling being uh, demonstrated by both teams here. Good close contact. Lots of action. Phantoms had it, lost it. And this one goes across the touchline up into the concession stand area where they're serving hot sausages this afternoon. <laughs> Only in You're my still dreams. Hungry. Only in my dreams. I remind you, you can watch the girls' contest between these two schools. Played a little earlier this afternoon in a very well played, uh, hard fought contest. Watch it right here on Channel 46. Talking about football, uh, young Mr. Paul Pavlik will be going to Hampton University in the fall and will probably be kicking for the their team before he graduates. And I'm talking football, not soccer. Good pace to this game. Phantoms on the attack, stolen by the Bruins. And that one goes out, and they'll say it will be a uh, possession of Bethel. Quickly down the field. I'll tell you. <laughs> you more contact. You got to be impressed. Little Joe Tiffler is uh, just a sophomore, Tim, but boy, is he hustled all over the place. I would think being smaller is an advantage in a game like well, this. Well, it is until somebody knocks you down and runs over you, which is, <coughs> I've seen that, that happened already this afternoon. Oh, we got to go. Every, and, they, and they celebrate so we know who it is. Every play is dangerous, and that one was uh, the case of the Bruins. Watch the replay. You get the number? I'm working on it. As soon as he turns around, I'm going to have it. <laughs> I think it's 12. No, I, yeah, it might be Nick Bell. Let me, I'll, I'll have to pick it up. We uh, have no PA announcer, and quite frankly, we're at the disadvantage of uh, not knowing yeah, the players. That's yep, exactly that's who, who it is. is. Okay, Nick so Bell. Nick Bell makes it a one-goal contest now. Well, he wasn't scheduled to start, Tim. Uh, he was a uh, uh, Joe Solomon was was scheduled to start, but Joe, for some reason, was not able to make the game, and uh, uh, very fortuitous for for Nick Bell. In the right place, right time to bring him within what is it, two to one now, right? Yep, two to one. Able to uh, to refer to uh, some place near and dear to your heart, the sportscombine.com. We have some statistics, and uh, Mr. Bell comes up here he's played 10 games he's had uh, no assists and 13 shots on goal and that happened to have been his second goal of the season at least as current as the statistics are well they're pretty current i got yep. them from uh kevin murphy and i appreciate those because it really helps of course it's just all the statistics for the bruins but uh now this is sportscombine.com when you go on there you can Find all about high schools uh, throughout the country, but uh, certainly about our immediate area. If you uh, go on there and log on, you just want to type in, for the area, you want to type in Peninsula. And then you can find out rosters, statistics, and uh, game descriptions for a lot of the sports uh, that take place here on the Peninsula. Centering pass is broken up. Brown had it and knocked it across the touchline. Now it'll belong to 
Well, let's say it was last touch by the Phantom, uh, by the Bruins, rather. So it's a Phantom throw in. In the corner, Finch centering pass. And that one is wide yeah. of the goal. And that will bring up a free kick. We've had a penalty kick early in the game here that resulted in a goal by Shami Brown. That's the difference in the contest, that penalty kick. Stolen by Brown, but he can't control it. Now the Bruins back on the attack. Quickly upfield. And stolen by Tiefer. Tefer, I'm not sure how to pronounce his name. We apologize up front for our uh, lack of the knowledge of some of the pronunciation, and we certainly don't do it intentionally, but if we can get some update on the uh, pronunciations, we will be glad to let you know. But yeah, uh, we're, we're Tefer sure. or Tefer, number four, you've mentioned his name before. Chris is a junior, 5'8", 145-pounder. This is Tefer on the kick. Bruins still controlling it. Nice tackle. And that was what is called a tackle, Bob, yes. when you uh, actually take the ball away and, and do so cleanly without interfering with the player Im himself. And that one went across the goal line, which will result in a free goalie kick. Oh, I had that. I remember that I told you guys that last time, but uh, I don't think anyone believed me. <laughs> the history of soccer. I looked for that today. I wanted to recapture that. Oh, you have the used Andy to, rolling in the, in the aisle. They used there. to play on fields that were miles long. They would play up and down the beaches, and there was no uh, – the only boundaries were uh, the water <laughs> to one side and, and as far to one another side as you want. They used to play for miles. I'll have to get that for the next next time we have this, Andy. Yeah. I've got to find that, Do off, that for Andy. off the Internet again. That was fun. In, uh, just email. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I'm going to share it with you. Hey, was, when you email it, don't say I love you on there either. <laughs> really? Isn't that the truth? A lot of the action down in the Phoebus end of the field. The Bruins trailing by a goal but keeping the pressure on. And now a free throw in for Bethel. Excuse me, yeah, for the uh, the Phantoms, rather. Two to one is our score. Phoebus two, Bethel one. Tim Cole and Bob Hintz coming to you from Darling Stadium. This on the 5th of May, also known as Cinco de Mayo. Cinco de Mayo. The only Spanish you know, huh? Yeah, well, I know tortilla, <laughs> chalupa. <laughs> taco. Uh, and taco, we see we're back on that food thing again, I told you. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, I do want to tell the fans, uh, that we talked about this in the earlier game we did with the, the girls, but this field will be uh, stripped. They'll put a new uh, sprinkling system in. They're going to uh, recrown it. They're going to re-sign it uh, this summer so we'll be ready for our first game which is the 25th of august we will start our first football game here at darling stadium and we will go 10 friday nights in a row and bring you the best in high school football in the state of virginia i tell you you can't get any better than the peninsula district you are correct sir and uh looking forward to that as usual the all-star contest will not be held here because of the uh, changes in the in the field, it will be held at uh, Todd Stadium as we have a another go. Whoa! Brown on the attack and oh, just barely, <laughs> oh, nice. barely got a hand on it as that shot on goal by Chandler Vogel, number 11, almost got past Mr. Sanborn, but a good effort by the goalkeeper to keep it from going across the line. I guess that would mean, Bob, that uh, the all-star soccer match will also have to be played somewhere else because yeah. they played that here, too, during the uh, all-star week. Will we be doing all-stars again this year? Football? Well, 
Usually we do, but uh, it's up to Scotty. But we're going to ask a uh, little tougher setup for us up there at, at Todd. But we will. I know we're going to have some uh, uh, young men on the on the special Johnny story. We'll probably be playing on the basketball. And uh, Crystal uh, Clary Clary from Phoebus will probably be on a girls team. Just to, just to mention a couple that will probably be from the Hampton in uh, the softballs. I mean in the, the Basketball, softball, I, I, I would imagine that Amy Irvin, not Amy Irvin, I'm sorry, Joanna Irvin, who is the pitcher at uh, Phoebus, has been a starter there for four years, would more than likely make the uh, all-star uh, softball squad. Uh, baseball, I don't know, but uh, we've got some uh, the Bruins that are doing right well this year. Speaking of the Bruins, Nice article in the Daily Press about Kim Rowe. Oh, I tell you, Tim, I was uh, I went over and watched the game at uh, Phoebus. Uh, when was it? Uh, Monday. And uh, young lady is is really impressive. I mean, it was scoreless up through the uh, fifth inning, and uh, errors cost uh, the fan of two runs in the top of the sixth and two runs in the top of the seventh, and that was the difference in the game. But the day before. Kim Rowe pitched a perfect game, fe fe faced 21 batters, <laughs> retired 21 Amazing. batters, 17 strikeouts, and then a one-hitter at FIBA. So, young lady is really doing good. And if you remember, her brother played uh, with Allen Iverson on the, uh, the championship basketball team. Uh, so that family's been very entrenched in the uh, – Bruin uh, athletic fields over there. Substitutions for both teams as we um, are approaching the halfway mark of the first half. Again, no official clock kept. The official on the field is the only person that knows for certain the exact time in the halves. We mentioned it uh, before, and those of you that may not be familiar with it, the uh, time uh, is continuous in soccer, and if there are some injuries and stoppage of play for that purpose, then time can be added to uh, the, the 45 minutes, but uh, generally speaking, clock is continuous. Stoppage of play here for some reason. The official, I'm, I, I can't, I'm going to assume some illegal contact was made. Both teams kind of lining up in a free kick and a dash for the keeper. Sanborn is there to field the ball and prevent a goal. Sanborn kicks it out to the halfway line. Got those allergies are really fighting you today, aren't they? I'm uh, having a good time here with Mother Nature, <laughs> battling through it. They don't seem to bother you on the golf course, though, do they? Actually, they do. Oh. <laughs> I was pl playing this past Monday, and, uh, and it got so bad on the back nine, I could barely see. <laughs> but something around this time of year, I guess, is all the, the uh, blooms are out, and the flowers are starting to go crazy, and so am I. Apologize to our listeners and viewers. Uh, try not to sniffle into the microphone. Play going on here, two to one in favor of the Phantoms. They scored the first two goals, and then Nick Bell has made it a one-goal game. And we've got a whistle and a stoppage of play. So the free kick coming up for the Phantoms. Get on goal. Wow, great job defensively that time by uh, the Bruins. I think it's a number on Derek that young Poole, man. Derek Poole, number 18, preventing Finch, number three, for the Phantoms from uh, getting a shot on goal. Poole, a sophomore, 5'6", 155. 
but did a great job of uh, not allowing the uh, get a shot on goal that time. Fielded by Sanborn, who will boot it downfield. Yeah, that ball, uh, even though it's round, takes some funny hops. Get the spin going on it, and uh, sometimes not quite certain where it's going to go. You and I were talking about it in the girls' game, and some of the backspin and side spin on the ball makes it a little more difficult to anticipate where it's going to go. Pavlik will get a goalie kick. Beautiful evening, early evening for this contest. Temperatures now cooling into the 70s. A very warm day today, one of the first warm days of the year, the 5th of May. The girls' contest played in the middle of the afternoon. They had a little warmer conditions to play under. Very little wind. It's, to, it's really a perfect afternoon for these guys to play some soccer. Hope you're enjoying our contest right here on Channel 46. We'll have Hampton. And Kickatan next week. The game will be played here at Darling on the 10th of May, and we'll have it for you here on Channel 46. Fast pace. It contest. really is. Uh, that ball can go from one end of this field to the other, and, and it, everybody gets down there. Stowers getting set to play the ball in. And just a freshman uh, is uh, Donna Stowers. Phantoms now with an opportunity. And a good job getting back on defense by Paul Zayas and uh, took out a Phantom player. Uh, looked like a clean play, didn't well, hear yeah, he, a whistle. Well, he kicked the ball and his, his follow through uh, caught the young man on, on, the, on in the, looks like he got him right on the uh, shin bone. Uh, Referee did signal like a timeout, Tim. So this is one of those areas where you were talking about if you want to explain the clock does not run at this point or actually he kind of adds time. And he is not getting up right away. That can be extremely painful. You can only imagine being kicked in the shins if you've ever had it happen. It's uh, not something that's a, a pleasant feeling. And he is still down. He may have gotten more than just a, a bruise on this one. So it uh, looks like... Someone from the Phoebus training staff is making their way over That's there. That's Jerry Gentry, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, uh, he was at the uh, softball game the other day, and he's got uh, his his SUV over there on the other side of the field, if you can see it, with the, yep. the back end up. And, uh, you know, I said, well, you know, I've heard of a dock in a box. I guess you're a dock in a box on wheels. There you go. <laughs> but uh, he's at uh, – comes to all the uh, athletic contests and that he can get to, and uh, – does a good job. Jerry right. Gentry, good hand for him. Remember him? He, uh, remember oh, yeah. he used to coach. Uh, he sure. coached the, the uh, basketball team for a while. Absolutely. Brent Johnson, uh, the freshman midfielder, is the injured player. So he'll try and walk it off. And now the corner kick will be taken by Mike Zamora. I'm going to have to guess that that is the girls' soccer team's coach's son. I would, that would be my guess. It'd be a, just a wild guess. Um, but you said that was Brent uh, Johnson, the one that got hurt. Yes. Okay. He's got. Uh, you said he was just a freshman, Tim. He's got a 3.65 GPA. Yep. And this is uh, Zamore here, number eight. We'll do it again, as that one was knocked over the goal line by a Bruin. 
Uh, Mike Zamora, 3.29 GPA, going to Avert College. He's a senior. Phantoms trying to keep it in play, and they're unable to do so. You notice how much faster they get the ball in? They, they're, oh, yeah. they're trying to catch the other team uh, Absolutely. kind of sleeping a little bit. Reminds me of international basketball rules, you know, where the oh, referee doesn't have to touch the ball. Have to touch yeah. the ball. And they uh, sometimes just stand in there kind of looking around, and before you know it, they've gone down the court. Very similar. Bruins on the attack. Substitution for Bethel. Tiefer, as we're pronouncing it, comes out of the game. And in his place comes number three. That would be Ernest Bethel. Come Bethel, nice. Bethel Unique Bethel. name. There you go. Ernest is a, a junior. 5'8", Dangerous territory. The ball <laughs> loose. Blocked at the defense. The Bruins putting the pressure on. And now who will they determine touched it last before it went across the goal line? It looks like it will be a corner kick for the Bruins. Ever dangerous are the corner kicks. Who is that? Is that number 13 doing the uh, in-depth, Edmund in-depth? Uh, I believe that's who it is, yes. The junior centering pass headed over the goal net. And let's see. They're going to say... Do it again. That was apparently uh, last touched by the Phantoms. So Edmund will do this one again. Gonna hook that pass in there. Ball loose and uh, knocked over the goal line. And this time it was knocked over by a Bruin. So it'll give the, the Phantoms a, a goalie kick. And it looks like number 14 is uh, Ben Demir. Uh, who is a, a senior sweeper, uh, GPA 3.26, going to the University of Georgia, North Georgia, uh, is uh, bringing the ball, putting the ball in play. Phantom is now with an opportunity. Feet on the left wing. <laughs> and a little aggressive tackle there by Paul Zayas as that will result in a free kick. I love You're not going to come through me. That's kind of like the no easy free throw rule. That's right. No easy layup. Yeah. Exactly. No hey. layup is what I meant. Um, I'm okay. Joey Lito will have the free kick. Got some pushing going on between the players. One of the Phantoms... Found the dirt. Now the official stops the play. Maybe going to uh, issue a warning. I'm not sure exactly what he's going to. He's going over to talk to the official on the sideline. He's calling uh, number 11 over. Maybe these are the uh, oh, they're gonna captains. Give them. Maybe going to tell them, look, you know, we're not we're the officials, we're in charge, and we're not going to let this thing get out of hand. So. So, yeah, I believe he did. I think he raised the he yellow, yellow card. card and sent both of them off the field. Well, I I don't know that they've been banished, but I think they've been uh, removed temporarily. So the officials keeping the. Keeping the uh, the game under control. A yellow card is a warning, and a red card means you you're out of here. here. Shot, Blocked at the defense. 
Good job of stealing the ball and keeping it in play for Phoebus is uh, Derek Poole. And now they're going to rule that uh, it went out of bounds off of Poole, which I well, thought was... Uh, yeah, but the, the first one down here first yeah. uh, signaled the other way. So that's... It's not tough enough to be running up and down the field, but then you got people banging on you. <laughs> tough sport to soccer. Bruins now have something going. Pavlik back, and it is a goal. Looks like it was that number four. I believe that is the, uh, the Bruin that scored it. That would be Tiefer. Because we have a Chris Tiefer and a Joe Tiefer. Here's the replay. Well, I'm assuming that's number four. That, that number in the front is so small. Yep, I think you're right. So well, that got... ties the game at two. The contest, I should say, the match. Phantoms trying to retaliate, but unable to do so as a goalie kick coming up. That may now be number four, Tim. This young man all the way over. Right at the midway line? Not the one at the back. The far side. Yeah, 16. Was it 16? Yeah, is that the one you called? I'm that was, talking, that was the other. talking about this young man over here, directly across. I'm pretty sure it's number well, four. Well, the both of the 16 and four brothers, so. Right, right. But I think it was number four. All right. And uh, now that's number six. Hmm. Well, we apologize. The, uh, the numbers are hard to read, and it's fast action, and it's hard to keep up with it at times. But. So you're, oh, I you're thought it was six, six. I thought it was number sixteen. The young man all the way over in the back. Well, we'll have to put an asterisk next to this one. If that's the case, we want to. It's a tiefer, either way. Yep. Sixteen or four. Well, I don't see four out there. Do you? Well, not at the moment. He may have come out. We'll see if we can get it straightened out. Maybe Ron can check at uh, halftime, which is getting very close to occurring. We're in the final minutes of the first half, two to two. Evis came out and scored quickly, and now the Bruins have retaliated with two of their own. Blocked at the defense. And the same man that blocked that shot, Ben Demirs, let it go across the end line or the goal line at least and uh, allows a free kick. I believe it's number 16, Tim. I okay. just, just that would be Chris Tiefer, if we're pronouncing the last name correctly. T-E-I-F-E-R. We hope we are. Oh. 
You think we'd be safe to say the Tiefer scored, right? <laughs> I think Although so. Although it might have been number six. Johnson, it was just um, no, not John, number six. No, there is number six for the Bruins, so it had to have been. Well, I've got one roster that has a number six on it and one that doesn't. For the uh, Bruins? Yes. Yeah, six is a, have, uh, Ryan Cunningham. Well, I even have two number sixes on this one. <laughs> well, this is the new one. This is the one he gave us. Okay. Great picture there on Channel 46, the dusk setting, the sun setting over to our left, and on a beautiful late spring evening, temperatures in the mid to upper 70s. Beautiful evening. That one goes over the goal, and that'll give a free kick to the Phantoms. Ernest Bethel will come out and he will get a breather. And he is replaced by number eight, Mike sure. Tran. Time winding down here in the first half. Final couple of minutes. And the time kept on the field. And during the second half, we will have lights, I'll bet. Didn't quite make the goal line, so rather than a corner kick, a throw in. But this has been a dangerous play for the Phantoms. The header is off the mark, and the kick over the goal. So that will give the Bruins the free kick. A nice deal. Yes, it was. And did you see that pass by Zamora? <laughs> Excellent pass. Stay get off it. my leg. <laughs> Staying with it. That was number 11. That was 11. really working. Chandler, Chandler Vogel. Yeah, you what, just young man. He's just a junior, but boy, he wasn't giving up, was he? No. Sir. Shot on goal and a save by Sanborn. And that will allow 
a corner kick to uh, a curve by the Phantoms. The very dangerous corner kick. And this young man who's been doing the corner kicking is, uh, has really been accurate with that centering kick. This one ends up a little too tall. Oh, nice pass. center kick. And the header is fielded by Sanborn. And the whistles to sound the end of the first half. Great so, action. Yeah, it's been an eventful first half. And our score at halftime is Bethel 2 and Phoebus 2. We'll return to Darling Stadium for the second half of action after this brief timeout. Second half underway as we're tied two to two, Bethel and Phoebus, and a, uh, a a monumental moment. Bob was correct. It was not Joe Tiefer. It was Chris, number 16, scoring the Bethel second goal to tie this contest. So, uh, Bob, I take my hat off to you. You were correct, sir. Well, I believe you, except that you don't wear a hat. Well, if I wore a hat, I'd take it off. Okay, that I'll accept. We have a new goalkeeper in the game for Bethel, Paul Zayas, who uh, was playing uh, a forward position in the first half, but he has taken over the position of keeper. Bruins working the ball downfield. Good job by number 13. That is the dip, and he goes down holding his right shin, and he took a, a whack. Slow to get up, but he is up. A lot of the injuries are uh, totally inadvertent. You know, you just go for the ball, and two players aggressively going after the ball are going to clash knees a lot of the time. Bruins in the phantom zone. Oh, nice. That one hit the top of the goal and goes out of bounds and it'll be a free kick for the phantoms. It seems like they may have picked it up the intensity a wee bit. Yeah. Another goalie kick coming up. Some nice moves by Jerry Brooks, a junior for the Bruins, but uh, unable to sustain it. Paul Pavlik will boot it away. Well, I have some uh, few things here from uh, Phoebus. Let me uh, run down those things for these young men. Uh, Get a chance to talk to him all. Number 22 out there is David Cleveland. He's a senior. He's got a 3.7 GPA. He's going to go into the Marine Corps at the end of the season. Uh, Omar Carter is a senior. He's going to go to Thomas Nelson. Uh, Jeremy Binder, uh, forward, has got a 4.4 GPA. He's just a junior. Ben Demir. 
I don't know if I'm not sure if that's where you pronounce it. D-E-M-E-Y-E-R-E. Demire uh, is a uh, senior, GPA at 3.26, going to the University of North Georgia. Chris Moore, senior, uh, GPA 3.65, going to Old Dominion. Peter Gallat, senior, GPA 3.65, going to Valley Forge. Mike Zamora, senior, GPA 3.29, going to Avert College. Uh, Brent Johnson, number six, is uh, just a freshman. He's got a 3.65 GPA. Uh, Chris French has got a 3.0 GPA, it looks like. Senior going to go to University of Washington State. Brian Hunter uh, is got a 4.0. He's going to go to Virginia Tech. He's a senior. And Paul Pavlik, of course, senior going to U Hampton University. He's got a 3.15 GPA. Now, I don't have any GPAs for Bethel. I apologize, but uh, I can only give you what I am given. given. Right. Ali. Talk about the uh, Bruins. We have uh, Ricky Smith as a junior. Uh, they got him listed 6'5", 175. Uh, Joe Solomon uh, is not with us today. He was supposed to be here, but he had a previous thing he had to do. Bethel, Ernest Bethel is a junior, 5'8", 135. Joe Tiefler, is that the way you pronounce that? And there's no L in there, so I'm going to Tiefer. assume it's Tiefer or Tiefer. Tiefer. I'm, again, apologize for our mispronunciation. Joe is a sophomore, 5'105". Uh, number five, Joe Wright is a senior, six foot one eighty. Number seven, Jerry Brooks is a junior, five nine one fifty five. Mike Tran, number eight, is a senior, five six one seventy. Andre Green, number nine, is a junior, five seven one forty five. Mike Sanborn, number ten, is senior, six foot two fifty five. Is one of the goalkeepers. Number eleven, Paul Zias, uh, senior, six two one seventy five. Number 12, Nick Bell scored uh, the first goal of the game. Senior, 5'8", 135. Number 13, Edmund Endip, uh, junior, 5'9", 140. 15, uh, Alex Martin, junior, 6'3", 175. Chris Tyfer, 16, now, uh, is a junior, 5'8", 145. Clinton Wallace, number 17, junior, 5'9", 155. Derek Poole, 18, a sophomore, 5'6", 155. And number 19, Matt Andrews, a senior, 6'2", 190. And the last one is Scott Loffis, number 20, a junior, 6'175". And it's getting darker, and I don't see the lights. <laughs> no. I wonder what it's going to do to it. It's a great shot with the camera, people. It will be until that sun goes completely away, or and we will be in trouble. Because I don't think we have enough time. Well, they started exactly at 7.30, so they have until 15 after. And me thinks it will be dark by yeah, that time. The sun sets about uh, 10 till 8. It looks like it's, uh, well, it's behind some clouds over there, which is not helping any. <laughs> Maybe. Well, they better start warming up, Andy, if they're supposed to have been turned on at 7.30. I think the guy may have forgot to flip the switch. <laughs> He's sleeping with Scott. Played about eight minutes of the second half. Two to two is our score. If you joined us late, you're watching the Peninsula District Boys Soccer Match between Phoebus and Bethel. Phoebus opened the scoring with Chris Finch scoring in the first minute to make it one to nothing. And then Shami Brown on a penalty kick made it two to nothing at the five minute mark. And then Nick Bell scored. About 15 minutes into the first half to make it a two to one game. And then Chris Tiefer or Tiefer. And again, we're uh, apologizing for the lack of knowledge on the pronunciation, but number 16, he scored. And that's the scoring to date two to two Bethel and Phoebus. 
<clears throat> Coming into the game, as I mentioned, the uh, Bethel team with a two and two record. Phoebus with a two and two and one record. So they've gotten an extra point from that tie. They have five points and are in sole possession of third place. Now, if this was a TV commercial, we'd have cars pulled around the side with the lights on with diehard batteries That's or right. something, right? Starting to get darker. Excellent speed demonstrated by both of those players going after the ball. Nice job of getting to it. Number eight for the Phantom Zamora. And on the other side, that was Derek Poole. Very fleet of foot, number 18 for Bethel. Mike Sambo, number 10, is uh, in as a defensive uh, player for the, no, he's, yeah, defense for the Bruins. You can spot him. He's a little bigger than the rest of those young men out there, 255. Offsides called against the Phantoms. Had a chance. In on the play was Chris Finch, who scored the first Phoebus goal, but unable to get to it before. Was Nice pass by uh, Zamora. Zamora, yep. Oh, we got to have a penalty kick here. Well. Could have been if it's inside that penalty box. When the contact is made, it can have a a penalty kick called. That looks exactly what we're going to get. And that's number 13 for the Bruins. That's uh, Edmund Endip. So golden opportunity for the Bruins here to take the lead. Paul Pavlik pretty much at the mercy. And a nice stop. Endip shot right on. And Pavlik there to make the stop. Anticipated which side he was going to. Well, I tell you, that was like awesome, wasn't it? You watch your replay here. We're going to show it to you again. This was just a, a good anticipation on the part of Pavlik and moved to his left and made the stop. You would think that the percentage of made goals in a circumstance like that would be uh, highly uh, against the, the goalkeeper. Yeah. With that. But uh, you, 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 I don't know what, how much scouting they do, but uh, you, you have a tendency that the, the kicker has a, a favorite spot or favorite side that he goes to. If you're right footed and you're at that angle, maybe you go more to the left side of the, the goal. Uh, but anyway, he, he did. He just anticipated. That one shot over the goal, which, by the way, is not easy because that goal is eight feet tall. And the width of the goal is exactly eight yards wide. Eight feet, eight yards. Eight feet high and eight wide. That is yards. Saving that. I was just saving it for that right up. Well, I'm glad you brought it up then because that was a perfect time. Well, 
Well, it's interesting you ask that, sir. <laughs> and the that question, actually, this question that he was asked. The question I was asked, question was asked, wouldn't that be meters since the origin of soccer is, uh, yes, it would. And the exact width in meters is 7.32 meters. <laughs> And the height is 2.44 meters. So now that you ask, I'm glad you. You got any other questions you want to answer, Scott? <laughs> this guy is. <laughs> Actually, the oddity was that the the size of the goal is exactly eight feet and exactly eight yards, which you know you would have figured they would have figured out an exact measurement of meters for it to be, but it's actually 7.32 meters wide and 2.44 meters high. The opening of the goal. That's true. <laughs> That's a very good point. And, and all the other measurements are in yards, which is odd. The arc of the circle um, in the radius is 9.15 meters or the equivalent of 10 yards. Well, you know, it sounds like an American figured out how big these things should be <laughs> and used the yards, uh, yeah. yards and feet. Possibly that. Possibly, who knows? But at any rate, they even know how tall those little flag posts in the corners are supposed to be. I got all of this stuff. Dealing with your average dummy here, you know. I'm above average. Uh, trying to dummy. tell us you do your homework, don't you? Well, I tried. I didn't get as much information as I wanted. But next week, I'm going to have more information than you could even want to know. I know, Scotty, before you have said, you're right. <laughs> Undoubtedly, I will. <laughs> Heavy contact. Let's see how they call this one. They say that was uh, the Bruins who precipitated that contact, so they'll allow a free kick for the Phantoms. Our score, as it was in the first half, remains two to two, in spite of an, a golden opportunity of a penalty kick. Paul Pavlik has kept his team in this contest at two all. We've played 15 minutes of the second half, a little more than 15 minutes to be exact, 16. Bob, I know you're worried about it. Still no lights. I know. I'm looking at that. And I, I heard Ricky tell me that they turned lights on at 730. Because I mentioned to him, I said, well, it's going to be dark before that second game's over. Could be Bob that didn't anticipate this game would last long enough for there to be a need for lights. Well, uh, the but, game started know, late because of the overtime. Well, but even then, with if it's if you figure two hours of game from right. uh, you know 4:30 to 6:30 and 6:30 to 8:30, and that's what I mentioned to uh, to uh, Rick Rawls, and he said, "Yeah, we turn had lights on at 7:30. That young man's not going the right place." I told him to go. But <laughs> maybe he knows somebody down there who's. Know something, I don't know. I saw someone standing down there and probably figured he might know. We could work with an abbreviated game. Cancel the last 10 minutes. Well. If it gets darker, we'll have to. <laughs> unless, unless they start wearing clothes that glow, <laughs> we're not going to ball the glows. No, we're, we're fortunate with our cameras that uh, they've had sufficient lighting. Oh, great save. Hey, nice effort on both parts. Uh, Zamora streaking down the right wing, put a shot on goal, and Zayas 
made an excellent stop. The goal, both of the goalies in the second half have made some tremendous stops. This was cleared all the way across the midway line. Pavlik comes up to grab it and he'll kick it downfield. Ruins bring it right back. Shot deflected and now the lights are coming on. Ah, somebody told somebody something. Young man got a hold of the right person. Does take him a few minutes to get up to uh, speed. I do want to remind the fans that uh, we will uh, recognize a player of the game from each one of these teams this evening, and that player will receive a plaque and a shirt. Plaque comes from uh, Engraving Inc., located at Tab Square on Route 17. For all your engraving needs, contact Jim at 596-8850. Dave Buckwalter is the owner. Shirt comes from the Island of Hardware and Sporting Goods, and they're located in Pocosin. They can meet all your sports needs with a full line of athletic goods, both team and individual, equipment, uniforms, plus screen printing. Call Dave Chubb at 868-8467. John Roberts is the owner. And, of course, we do want to thank again Zooms and David Allen for allowing us to recognize the senior boys soccer player, girl soccer player, the softball, baseball uh, from the Hampton City Schools, who has uh, demonstrated academic excellence. These uh, young people will receive an award, a plaque at the school board meeting that usually towards the end of the season. And we want to thank David Allen and Zooms for the continued support of WHCS and our student athletes. And if you're listening, David, Send potato some... wedges and fried chicken. <laughs> we could use it. Could use the nourishment. Use the nourishment. Of course, talk about uh, HCS reports. It has a new look this year. Join Beth Sadler, the uh, anchor, on Mondays and uh, through Friday at noon and again at 5 p.m. for all the news and information about the Hampton City Schools. And, of course, the first and third Wednesdays of each month, uh, the school board meets, and you can see that live here on Channel 46. And that starts at 7.30, and uh, if you need to, Turn us in. Tune in. Be informed. And we still want to talk about Homework 2000 or the Mass Zone. Uh, it's WHCS Channel 46 presents this. This is a live, televised, interactive call-in program for students to get help with their math. Join Tyler Elementary teacher Cassandra Hamilton and Davis Middle School teacher Sherry Martin, Tuesdays and Thursdays at 5 to 6 p.m. Give them a call and join them at 850-5426. And it just keeps getting lighter and lighter yeah, and lighter. lighter. All right. So and the you... sun can set. We don't care now. <laughs> Our cameras can give you the shot. Two to two. I guess a tie would be in the favor of the Bruins because right now they have a half a game lead because of a tie. So if there's another tie, that would uh, give them a full game lead then, I guess, huh? 
Actually, what they do is you get points. You get two points for a victory and one point for a tie. Oh, yeah, I gave you some stuff on points, and I didn't understand all that. Did you get that? Look at that right here. Yeah, yeah, this is, uh, is exactly the, the uh, as I mentioned, you get uh, two points for a victory and one for a tie. All right. Oh. Some, huh? Which one are you signaling there, uh, Scotty? Yeah. And there's been some good good efforts on both sides. Uh, some excellent hustle being demonstrated. Talking about Nick Bell for the Bruins is doing great. In fact, he, not only good defense, but he's the one that uh, he scored, scored one of their goals. He scored the first goal, didn't he? Yeah. Oh, he's talking about number 12 for the Phoebus. That's Chris Moore. A young man going to Old Dominion in the fall. We have played 25 minutes of the second half unofficially. More than halfway through the second half. Tied at two. Phantoms. And they'll get a free kick as they were tripped up. Official slows play down just a little bit for the Bruins to get back. Well, he said you moved the ball up a little further. <laughs> this allows the Bruins to put up a, a wall there, a bit of a wall at least. Cover some various players. And this one shot right at the keeper. Paul Zayas able to make the easy stop. on the attack. This is Endip. <clears throat> A good defense employed by the Phantoms, number 18, Stowers. And forced the Bruin player to uh, kick it over the touchline. So it's a throw in. And this one was out off of a phantom, so the Bruins will have it. Smith checks out for Bethel. See if we can pick up a number on his replacement. It'll be number 19, Matt Andrews. <clears throat> Phantoms with a free kick. Nothing easy. Neither one of these teams are letting the other team get anything easy, Tim. They're really no, they're sticking to each other like glue. Playing tight defense. Got somebody in there. Maybe they just 
You almost sense this one might go into OT, although now the Phantoms have an opportunity. And a score. Oh, nice move that time. Beautiful move. Who's that, number nine? That's number nine. That is uh, Brown, his second goal. Tommy Brown, I'll tell you what, Tim, he made a move on the goalie that, watch this move right here. Now, watch, see that? Just took the goalie out of it. And Zayas is, uh, Zayas, I think it is, Paul Zayas is, uh, appears to be shaken up. Staying down, he's uh, not getting up the uh, referee over to to check on him and make sure he's okay. Didn't see, uh, uh, he went down a little bit awkwardly, but I, I don't know exactly why he would still be down. You may remember Sanborn, who is standing nearby, started the game. I guess uh, his eyes just uh, had the wind knocked out of himself, but uh, he's up and hanging and, in there. And he probably a little disappointed in himself, too. He was uh, faked out of position. He came out, cut down the angle like he's supposed to do, and then, uh, but a great move by Shami Brown, Jr. And he got a good assist. And I, I apologize, not able to pick up who the assist went to, but. Uh, well, if my guess would have been that it was probably Zamora. <laughs> yeah, I, it, it probably was Zamora. I think you're uh, you're probably right. In any event, the Phantoms have regained the lead. They led two to nothing, only to see Bethel tie it up. Now Pavlik makes a play on the shot on goal and a save. Hear that one smack off of the player's head all the way up here. It was a long, high kick. <laughs> if you don't hit it just right, that can make your uh, Ooh. <laughs> your uh, the ears, eyeballs do a little jiggle. Ring. Yes. <laughs> Ball is hard. Phantoms. And the ball gets past the defender. Zamora chases it down. And uh, the Phantoms will get a chance to play it. And you can see him put his head back and take a couple of deep breaths, but he has been down. He's been <coughs> running hard down at this end. He's been all over the field. Mike Zamora, senior. Headed to Averett College, as you mentioned. I like the hair. <laughs> Makes it easy for him to be spotted on the field. Eh? It is. It's hair envy. <laughs> I wasn't going to touch that one. Oh, that was the logical choice. Zamora in inadvertently kicked the ball into the back of one of the Bruins. Totally unintentional. And went over to say, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do that. 15 minutes left in regulation. What well, you just read my mind. I was going to ask you. Bethel down by a goal. <laughs> Heavy contact. Be a free kick for the Bruins. That'll be Matt Andrews taking it. Bruins need a goal to tie. Oh. 
Thebes keeping fresh troops in there, substituting very freely during the last uh, half of this second half. Keeping fresh legs out there. Pete Powell trying to keep that edge. So the Phantoms with an opportunity here now. They get a the corner kick again, huh? No, it actually it has to cross the goal line oh. to get a corner kick. So it this will be oh, okay. A, it didn't cross the goal line. Right, it crossed the touch line, which is on the side. So it'll be a throw in. demora has got a real accurate toss here. That one uh, contact between the goalkeeper and the Phoebus player. And the goalkeeper, uh, Zayas, uh, still smarting from that goal he gave up a moment ago. Uh, had a word or two for the player that bumped into him, and neither player uh, wanting to back off here. And cards will be uh, demonstrated to both sides, and now the tempers are starting to get a little ugly here. And a red card. Zayas will uh, not continue this game. He will be ejected. I think uh, Andy mentioned, Bob, if you get a red card, you don't get to play the next game either. That's right. It's, it's like, uh, uh, you know, in football, if you get ejected or basketball, you have to set out the next game. Yep. Now, VHSL, uh, that's a ruling from the VHSL. So, uh, and nothing, you know, nothing more than uh, just some glares and uh, a little bit of uh, Body language, but uh, oh, I think a little, a little more, a little bit. About it. Well, a been, lot of well, there weren't any punches thrown. No, no, like but that. there it was. was uh, but they were told to break it up and didn't do so. And and the officials, keeping control of the game, said, "Look, we're not going to put up with this." So uh, Sanborn will don the appropriate gear, and he will go back in at goalkeeper. And Zayas will uh, be uh, spending the rest of the time on the <laughs> well, sideline. No, he's still hot. He's still hot over there. There was some contact, but, uh, you know, it wasn't uh, – it didn't appear to be at least uh, anything extraordinary. Well, you know, he had got hurt. Yeah, he was shaking up earlier. Earlier and uh, took that as a uh, – <clears throat> as an attack on him. So, so now we got a, an ejection and what is going to happen now. Um, I'm not sure. I don't know that the Phoebus player that was involved in that has been. I don't think he didn't get the red card. No. He got a yellow card. In any event, order is restored. I'm going to assume that this is a time that will be added on. I'm trying to remember where we are here. And I think the, uh, the play calls for a uh, goalie kick or perhaps even a free kick. Hopefully we can resume soccer and not hockey. <laughs> There's some similarities in there, aren't there? Yeah. Well, as I said, before it's a contact sport, tempers will be heated on occasion. Hopefully cool heads will prevail. The officials doing a good job not putting up with anything, and soccer they don't. You know, you, you start getting too physical, and they'll throw you out of the game, as they should. In the hockey, you just get penalties, right? That's right. You get a five-minute penalty box, uh, and, you know, and your team has to play shorthanded. I don't know that that's the case here. I think you just get ejected in soccer. Back to the game at hand here. Phoebus holding on to a one-goal lead. Trying to uh, preserve the one-goal lead. Some contact between players, sportsmanship prevailing. Free kick for the Phantoms. I'm not sure. I'll have to check into the rules. I know on a yellow card whether you have to come out of the game temporarily or not. I know that uh, 
the player who got the yellow card, and I'm not going to identify everybody, but the famous player left after getting the yellow card and now has returned. So I don't know whether there's a. <coughs> So you get one yellow card, and on your second yellow card, the yellow card turns red. With envy? With uh, ejection. Ejection. Yeah. Ha if the time had been running continuously, we're about six minutes away from the end of time, but I have to think they will add time on for that... Uh, that uh, display two or three of minutes. tempers, yeah, that, that, that <laughs> altercation uh, for lack of a better description. Boys will be boys, nobody, you know, no one threw a punch or anything, no blood, no foul, right? Isn't that how it works? That's exactly right. You got it, you got it. Players of the game, Bob. Well, uh, Phoebus, I'm gonna go with. Shami Brown, who are we going with Bethel? <laughs> Held that one up for me a while ago, so I get to do the Bethel side of this thing, huh? Well, going to have to think about that one since I've been given that task. And it's tough. There's been some good play out there. There's been some excellent efforts. I tell you, he's done a nice job of uh, bringing the ball down the field. That's uh, Andre Green, number nine. He's just done a real nice job of that. Nick Bell. Has a goal, and, and uh, we mentioned earlier he's played some good defense. So I'm going to have to give this a little further thought, though. I tell you, it was is between Shammy Brown and uh, and Mike Zamore because yeah, Zamore young, has been Zamore has just been all over the field. Yep. And you don't have to score goals to be extremely important in this game. Setting them up is many times uh, even more difficult to do than scoring yep. a goal. A little more skill involved sometimes uh, in in the assist. Well, I'll reserve my pick because if one of the Bruins comes back to tie this game up, it might change my choice. So I'll hold off until the conclusion here. Phoebus holding on by one. Back on the attack. Zamora, who had come out for a breather, will come back in. And we'll throw the ball in. Yeah, <laughs> they need a, him. He's I'm telling you, he has been, he is the man. He does the throwing in. There's no question about who's the, the designated thrower, if there is such a thing. He's, look at that high drifting toss there that allows his teammates to get an opportunity to either head it in or kick it in. And he also does the uh, corner kick, right? Yep. Time winding down. Can't tell you exactly how much the time is kept on the field, so we're not uh, aware of the exact time. The referee keeps that time. Pavlik feels the ball. That is not a save. Now, a save uh, is only registered when the shot could have the possibility of going into the goal. And that one being well off the mark would not be considered a save. Good centering pass. Oh, wasn't it? Bruins very much alive here. Good job of clearing it out. Nice steal that time. Yep, that was a good job because it looked like the Bruins had something working, and now the Phantoms can't keep control. And uh, well, that was number ten that did that, Tim. Yep. Uh, that was Paul uh, Peter. Paul and Peter. Who? Peter Gillot. Uh, Gillot. I'm sorry, Gillot. Could be Gillot. 
And the sound of the whistle signals the end of the contest. Final so score. The final score, Bethel on the short end of a 3-2 to two victory by the Phoebus Phantoms. Tippers got a little bit uh, warm there for a while, but uh, cooler heads prevailed, and I see the, the players shaking hands. My player of the game, tough call, going to be Chris Tiefer, number 16. Played a good game, got the tying goal, but Shami Brown for the Phantoms, the only goal in the second half to lead his team to a 3-2 victory over the Bruins. For Bob Hintz and the entire Channel 46 crew, this is Tim Cole. Thanks for watching. Good evening, everybody.